Thank you. Uh, welcome. I uh, will present you a work of a group of four people. You can see the members. Bence is here in the room. Other two PhD students are not here, unfortunately. So, uh, uh, we have a subject which were te taught so far or till this year in Hungarian is automation surveying systems and this year we started in the English language and it was a good uh, uh, option to rethink the whole subject. So I would like to uh, present you some experiences what we did before this year and from that we get some new ideas and uh, we uh, changed the, not only the tools we use the, but the methodology uh, too and I will introduce you some components 99% is open source and uh, I try to summarize something uh, what we reached and what are the experiences till now. Okay, so this automation survey system subject is taught for civil engineers uh, at our university and it, uh, these students are specialized for land surveying and geoinformatics. So they are not programmers at all and they have not much good attitude to programming, to tell you the truth. <clears throat> Pre recently, our approach was that give the students or show the students a problem and find a good tool for the solution. That's give us that. Uh, the students mostly learn MATLAB in other subjects, so we used Octave or MATLAB for mathematical problems, for number crunching, and we realized that it's not good for text processing. Sometimes we have to do text processing. We choose OAK for this, that unique text uh, utility, and sometimes we used Bash also, and recently we turned a bit to Python. We realize that it's too much for the students, too diverse sources, and no time to teach them the base of those environments, those languages. So it was a, 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 a big problem, and the students became frustrated after the fourth languages, language. Sorry. And uh, this is maybe a positive attitude of COVID, we turn to the online systems, we use more and more the internet uh, uh, in our courses in the ed education. And the, our previous experience was we have some small open source project at our OS Geo Lab and we mostly use Python in these uh, uh, projects. And uh, the aim of this subject uh, to give enough knowledge to the students to read the source code, try to apply for their problem, changing few lines or few things and uh, get some good result. And of course, with this small project, we used Git and GitHub, so we have some experiences on this area too. So, our new ideas was, do not mix programming languages in the same subject, and we choose Python because it's good for number crunching, good for data processing, good for text processing. Maybe there are better tools, but it's 
uh, a good uh, choice, I suppose, and even it's very good in AI topics, which we partly uh, uh, have in this uh, subject. Uh, and the other problem is that students, most of the students won't learn day by day. But it's a big problem because uh, there are some scientific researches about that. If a student uh, learns one whole day for the exam, he can pass the exam, but after two weeks he remembers nothing. If he learns every week half an hour, he will remember the things for years. So, that was the idea to somehow to force them to make something weekly, not to forget everything. And uh, we uh, uh, realized that it's a good thing to use most of the things, for most of the things, uh, the internet. We don't know if maybe we get again a uh, 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 Pandemia, it's easy to turn this uh, subject to the online teaching. Okay, and to measure the knowledge of the students, we uh, uh, decide to have tests. Our, uh, our faculty uses Moodle for at least five years, and so we recently use a test for measure the uh, knowledge of the student. But in this subject, we uh, mostly use tests, the students measure their knowledge. So the result of the test is not considered seriously. And the students have the chance to solve the same test several times. But of course, we uh, use a random test and not the same question are asked all the time. And uh, recently we used uh, Git and GitHub for our classes, but it was written in restructured text with code blocks and beside we uh, present the code, the source code in a separate file it was not so convenient for the student. So we uh, turned to Jupyter Notebook and we choose Collab because that case the students needn't to uh, install anything on their own machine. Collab is a, a, a virtual machine, a Linux virtual machine with Python pre-installed, and you can use it in the browser. You need only a Google account, so it's a Google uh, free product. And to force them to work, each hour lesson has some part for small task. There are the several lines of code in the Jupyter notebook, and some question can be answered if they change few lines, one or two lines, and they get a success uh, without much work. So these tasks are usually uh, shorter than half an hour to, to solve. And uh, there is a project which the student has to finish at the end of the semester, and they have to present it to the other students. Uh, and uh, the exam is a coding exam. They get a task. It's an open book exam. They can use anything except personal communication. I don't know whether any student tried to use GIS Tech Exchange for, to get the answer, but probably the time is too short to get the answer, but it's possible. Okay. So, we use the components, we have uh, Moodle as the uh, central uh, uh, 
entry point for the students, all the materials, all the uh, things to know is there and the task and, and the tests are in the Moodle. Unfortunately, it's not visible for you because it's not open. Some classes are open, but the tests are not open for the whole world and you cannot submit a task if you are not a student of the, the subject, of course. I, <clears throat> I think it's uh, acceptable, but beside, we have a GitHub page where all the lessons, all the Jupyter notebooks are available for everybody. And to tell you the truth, we use about 16 Jupyter notebooks in our classes in this subject, and we have more than 50 uh, uh, class on the GitHub, not all of them in, in Jupyter. And of course, from the GitHub page, you can open the collab, and you can, on the GitHub, fortunately, can display Jupyter notebooks, so you can see the result, you, see, you can see the code, the images, and, and the uh, explanations, but you have to open it in Colab if you would like to run it to change the code. It's not available in GitHub, of course. And beside, uh, in the other group of uh, icons, we use mostly Python, but we use some other open source software like Cloud Compare, QGIS, and I forget to mention here the RTK lib for GNSS receiver data processing program. And uh, uh, <coughs> Moodle is the main entry point, as I mentioned you, some view of this. This is a typical topic in the uh, uh, Moodle page. There are some presentation, mostly in PDF, some extra uh, uh, things. Here you can see we, what is public here. You can see if you look for our uh, uh, Moodle uh, portal. Uh, there is a Jupyter notebook. There are some small assignment. So, sometimes many of them, the students not forced to solve all of them, but we ask them at least solve one. And we have some extra materials sometimes. <clears throat> Sorry, it was the wrong button. So, Moodle test, uh, we used it, we are using it from several years, there are different type of questions. It's not the most user-friendly environment to create tests, but if you uh, get acquainted with it, it's, it's, uh, it's a good tool and uh, save a lot of time of uh, correcting or overviewing the tests. Here are some different type of text. Test and for example, we have in this uh, uh, course we had 18 students, and the test was filled 166 times. So a student filled it. Maybe there there are of course some busier students who fill it 20 times. Some of them fill it on twice. And he, here are the results. It, here only the best results are shown. Here was, this was the laziest student, to tell you the truth. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the questions are organized in Moodle in question banks, and the question bank has a hierarchical uh, uh, structure, and you can give, and, and it's you are forced to use this hierarchical structure if you would like to make random text, test, sorry, because you can use a group and please, I have, for example, here in 
group regex, I have 17 questions, and in the test I can say, ask two random questions from these 17. And this way, if the, he feel the, or, uh, the student feels the test 10 times, maybe he won't get the same question again. The Python 3 and Python packages, we use a lot of packages. Uh, when I collected, preparing for this presentation, when I collected all the packages we use, I was shocked. We use so many. But again, the philosophy is that find a ready solution for our program and put it in our solution. So that's why we use so many. Maybe it's too much. Later, we have to try to uh, reduce. Under the line, there are the standard uh, Python packages. Over the line, the non-standard Python packages. But fortunately, Colab has a lot of them pre-installed. Only few of them have to be installed manually, but it's possible on Colab too. So, GitHub storing of educational manual uh, materials. We use the uh, uh, Jupyter notebook format. Here is the uh, uh, GitHub page, and there is an open collab button in each page when we have a Jupyter notebook. This is the summary page on the GitHub, which is available for anybody. And this is my activity in the GitHub in the, this year. The first half year were very active. I have never made so many uh, 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 commit on GitHub before. Uh, Google Colab is good tool. It, this is some a picture from Google Colab. The students can try it, can change the code, and no need to type in the code. We waste a lot of time be before to force the student to type in the code and find each student's different typing mistakes. It, it took many time, unfortunately. Okay. And uh, we use Google Colab to, uh, sorry, I push always the wrong button. And we use MS Teams, Microsoft Teams, because it's a use the faculty wide uh, for consultation and for question and answers sometimes. And we use it for online consultation. We have uh, on-site classes, but we uh, personal consultations mostly made on uh, MS Teams. Some topics we cover in this subject, just to make you some uh, feelings. And finally, what uh, uh, the lesson we learned. Uh, uh, maybe one semester is not enough to uh, make a conclusion. Okay? The, the main idea is that by, uh, while the subject is for data processing, the students much more uh, uh, enjoy when they collect the data, what they process. It's much better. And we use some sensors here. On the image, you can see some robotic total station, which are derived from uh, software or a GNSS receiver or, or, or something like that. So it, it was the best. And I, we think that it's a good uh, direction to change our uh, 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 subject, and hopefully we will get more sub success in the future. Okay, thank you.